right in this video we're going to look at the relationship between the production uh, we're going to first look at the production function in more detail okay production function in the short run and then that's going to lead us into seeing the relationship between the production function and the cost function okay so remember we had this we had a fairly complicated production function before we have natural resources labor capital tech entrepreneurship so we're going to cut most of these things out um, we know that we now have to have a certain technology but uh, we can't choose that in the short run and we also know we have to have an entrepreneur but again we're not going to talk about changing that so we can just ignore it and natural resources sort of just come along with the process so instead we're going to simplify this and we're just going to look at this okay we're just going to consider the labor and the capital and in the short run um, in the short run our, our capital okay so we're going to look at this in the short run and in the short run our capital is fixed so well capital is fixed because in the short run we, we can't change um, like for example the size of our building or the amount of machines that we have because it would we have to shut down our business for a period of time to install the new machines and get them up and running and set up everything so anyway so in the short we're going to assume that our capital is fixed and then only in, in this simple model only uh, labor can change so that's the idea we're going to say. So if we want to produce more, we have to add more workers. Okay. Um, so that's that's the idea, and we're going to walk through this with a with a simple uh, numerical example. At that, I will then also explain the idea behind it. So our marginal product of labor is something called the marginal product of labor. That is how much production if we get extra production we get if we add a worker. So this is our gain in production from adding one more worker okay so that's our idea so we're gonna that's gonna be an important idea here and so we're gonna we're gonna do two things so let's walk through uh, an example first and then we'll come back to to sort of the general idea in a second okay so let's go through our example. So our example, we're going to stick with this example of a pizza place. Um, I think in your textbook for this section, they do something about cutting wood. It's actually a very good um, example, too. So you probably want to walk through that. So our capital, we have one oven. Okay. And then our workers are going to vary. So we can change our workers. So I'm going to make a little chart here. And this, so this is going to be labor. The capital is this is going to be fixed in the short run. So in the long run, they can install another oven. Right now, they can't. Maybe the kitchen is just that size. They would have to even change the building. So one oven. Um, this is the number of pizzas they can make in one hour, let's say, for example. And then the last one is the marginal product of labor. So this is the change in pizzas for the, compared to the change in labor. Okay, So that's our marginal product of labor. So how much will the pizzas change if they change our labor? And you can interpret that as how much extra production do we get from having one more worker? So if we have zero workers, we're going to get zero pizzas. Okay. So as we're assuming the pizzas can't make themselves, we don't have robots in our kitchen. Um, if we have one worker, they can only make 10 pizzas an hour. And I have uh, never worked making pizza, so I have no idea. I have worked in some food, so I have no idea if this is a reasonable number. Uh, the numbers are purely made up. Okay, so anyways, we have one worker, they can make 10 pizzas. The reason they don't make that many in an hour, so they can serve 10 customers in an hour, um, the reason they don't make that many pizzas, uh, and this might even actually be an overestimate, is because they have to do everything. So we got, so this, you can imagine the person is in the front, uh, serving the customers, taking their money, then they're sprinting in the back to make the pizzas, put them in the oven, and then when more customers come, they sprint to the front, um, and so they're running back and forth, they're doing all the jobs, they're making, they're, they're doing all the different parts of this, and so they're not gonna be super productive, because it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be difficult for them to do all these different things, okay? So we add a second worker, and now the total production goes up to 25. Okay, so the way I got the marginal is you compare to the one before. So, well, the total production is 25, and with one worker is 10, so we can say that the second worker added 15 pizzas, right? So this is that's what the marginal product of labor mean. It how much did they add to the production? So they added 10, uh, 15. Sorry. Now the thought process is well, why would this happen like this? And uh, the the idea is basically well, now they can do some kind of specialization. 
right? So then now they can do some kind of specialization um, where one of them uh, can work in the front and handle the customers and the other one can work in the back making the pizza and managing the oven. So let's say we add a third worker and now we get 50 pizzas. So now they add the marginal product of this person is actually 25 because the total pizzas went from 25 to 50 when they joined the production process. So again, our, here our marginal product of labor is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reason, again, is there can do some specialization. So now they're even more specialized. One person is taking the money at the front um, and, and working with the customers. One person is actually putting the pizzas together. And, and the other person is handling the cooking, the packaging, the cutting, um, you know, pouring the drinks, all that kind of stuff, right? So somehow they're, they're putting this process together. So when we look at this part, the, we see the marginal product of labor is going up. We get a gain um, from specializing. Okay, so so um, in this case, the 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 process. So they can specialize their part, and then they can produce more. And this is very common. So most 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 processes need a certain amount of people to be kind of reach peak efficiency. So here, um, their uh, their marginal product of labor is actually rising uh, throughout this time, and that's just because three people working in the restaurant is much more efficient than one person working in the restaurant. So they, instead of making uh, just three times what the one person made, they made five times in this case, right? The 50 compared to the 10. Um, so that's where we can see this. But we're going to find out that if we keep on going, we're going to run into a problem. So we keep on going, we add workers. So we had a fourth worker, and let's suppose we get 60 pizzas. Now the marginal product of labor has dropped. We only added 10 that time, so going from here to here. That's where we see the marginal product of labor. Um, we only added 10 that time, and that's because, well, the the um, now all the jobs are being done, so now this person is maybe doing some cutting or making of some dough, but they're not adding that much to the process. And then let, and let's suppose it's a pretty small kitchen, okay? So we add a fifth person, and so this person adds a little, and then finally this person adds nothing. Okay, so let's do it that way. Um, so what the problem we've run into here is something called diminishing uh, marginal productivity. Okay, and this always happens. So this is this is diminishing marginal product of labor, right? And then, so in this case, capital is the limiting fa is the limiting factor. So just adding more labor to the same capital is just not going to get the job done. So what, what's happening here is you only have one oven of a certain size. And so this oven can only cook a certain number, even at max efficiency, this oven can only cook a certain amount of pizzas in one hour, right? So we've run into the limiting factor in this case, and that limiting factor is our capital, right? So this will always happen if you, if you fix one factor and then you change the other factor, you would expect to run into diminishing uh, returns this is called and in this case we fixed the capital and we changed the labor so this is called a diminishing marginal product of labor so we can we kept our capital the same we add more and more workers eventually we just have too many workers and those extra workers are not going to produce hardly anything at all so this is very common um, for this to do like this it's very common for for um, the there first to be some kind of gain from specialization and then secondly to then have this diminishing marginal product of labor come in Let's show what this, uh, before we stop, let's show what this is going to look like in a graph, okay? And hopefully my graph will have enough. I'm just going to kind of draw a sketch. Um, I'm not going to draw a detailed graph, okay? So our marginal product of labor, we can graph that one first. Um, so we get the Q and L, right? This is going to be our marginal product of labor. Um, so let's suppose this is 10, 20. Okay, and these are, let's make this one, two, five, something like that. Okay, starting this over. Uh, so first one, the marginal product of labor is 10. And for our second one, it is 15. And our third one, it is 25. And our fourth one, it goes back down to 10. And then our fifth one is back to five. And our sixth one is down to zero. I should extend my graph a little bit. And so our marginal product of labor looks like this. This is our marginal product of labor. And so again, this part over here is from specializing. And this part over here is called diminishing marginal product of labor. Okay. And we can also graph our total on here. We can also graph our total 
and then we'll use this in a second. I'll just graph it here in this space. So this is again, this is a graph of our production function. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay. So our first worker, again, our first worker brought us 10. And then our second worker brought us to 25. And our third worker brought us all the way up to 50, which would be here. And, but, and then after that, we started to slow down. That's 60, and I think that's where we stopped out at, right? Oh, no, we stopped out at 65. And then finally, 65. Okay, so our production function looks like this. Okay, so it has this flat part here. Sorry, this part that is um, what they call concave up, right? It's going, it's, it's increasing uh, faster and faster. So this is the gains from specializing. But then eventually we run into this part where it's getting flatter and flatter. And this is the part of the, well, we can, we have it right here. This is the diminishing marginal product of labor. Okay. So this always happens, diminishing marginal product of labor. So we can see it. So it gives this distinctive shape. Um, so the first part, the specializing part, we expect to usually be there. Um, the last part we expect to definitely be there. It's pretty much impossible, almost impossible to think of it not happening. Um, because you're, eventually your space, your capital is going to be a limiting factor to how effective your labor can be.